Last time we discussed the problem that we face when we try to calculate the electric field far away from a charge configuration which has the total charge summation to be zero. And the simplest one we looked at is a plus q and a minus q separated by some distance to a. And the distance to a take it as 2a is just so that in our final answer, which we will see, we don't get a fraction. And that's how they usually write that in your textbooks. So I'm going to keep the same notation. All right. There's another reason to call this as 2a. Okay. This simple configuration with a positive and negative charge of same magnitude separated by a distance, we give it a name. It's called an electric dipole. There are other kinds of dipoles as well. There's something called as a magnetic dipole. Okay, but we're dealing with electricity over here, so electric dipole, I'm just going to call this dipole. And we want to calculate the field at a point P along the axis. And this time it matters now where we are calculating the field, even though we're calculating it far away, as you will see. So the question now is, what is the electric field at point P if R is much bigger than 2A? That's what eventually we want to figure out. But there's no direct way of doing it. We have to now start from scratch. So let's use Coulomb's law and let's use superposition principle and figure out what's going to happen. Since we have solved problems, this shouldn't be too hard. We know that the electric field due to this charge, charge A, at this point should be outwards and that electric field, I'm going to call it as EA, is in this direction. And the electric field due to this charge over here is going to be negative and that electric field is going to be in this direction. I'm going to call this electric field this way. And since we have already seen in the previous episode that since the point P is closer to negative charge, this electric field is going to be a little bit stronger. So I know that the net electric field is going to be in this direction. Since I already know that, I'm going to call this as a positive direction. So that you know, in our final answer, we're going to get a positive number. That's it. Okay, let's figure out what that electric field is. So the net electric field at point P is going to be Ea, which is negative number, so minus of Ea plus Eb. And we can calculate what Ea is. Ea is the field due to this charge, and so that's going to be a negative. The negative sign is only due to the sign conventions. Negative k q divided by this distance square, ap squared. And notice that ap is R plus A. I hope you can see that. So this is R plus A, the whole square. This one is going to be a positive because of my sign convention and that will be K Q. Notice I don't put the sign in. We have discussed that before. Divided by this distance. And that's going to be R minus A the whole square. Notice this whole thing is R, R minus A. So subtract A, you get R minus A, the whole square. Okay, if we immediately use the fact that we are far away and if we say, look, R plus A is same as R and R minus A is also same as R. If we immediately do that, notice you will get a minus KQ by R square plus KQ by R square and the whole thing goes to zero and that's where approximation fails. This tells us I, I can't use the approximation yet. I have to simplify this a little bit further and maybe later on I can do that. So let's simplify this. If we simplify, we can take um, KQ out. What remains inside is 1 minus, sorry, minus 1 by R plus A the whole square plus 1 by R minus A the whole square. And when we do that, you get a KQ into, you get a common denominator of r square minus a square. Can you see that r plus a times r minus a is r square minus a square, but since I have a square over here, this whole thing is squared. I hope you can see that in the denominator. In the numerator, I will get a negative r minus a whole square plus r plus a the whole square. You can pause for a while if you want to check the algebra and you can do that to yourself. Now let's expand this. The expansion of r plus a whole square is r square plus a square plus 2ra. Here the expansion is also r square plus a square but minus 2ra. 
Due to the minus sign, r square, r square and a square, a square cancels. And what I end up with now is a plus 2ar and a plus 2ar. Again, you can check that. You can pause the video and check that. You end up getting kq into 2ar divided by r square minus a square the whole square. Alright, so this is the result that we get for point P, it would be anywhere, close or far away, this is the result. And now, let's go far away and see if things, things work out. So now let's consider R much bigger than A. I can now again approximate in the denominator that R square minus A square is almost R square. But in the numerator, notice, you cannot neglect that A. Because the moment you say, okay, let's neglect A, it becomes zero. You can't make, see, don't think I'm saying A is zero. A is not zero. I'm only approximating saying that when you do R square, when you are adding or subtracting a very tiny number, you can neglect it. But when you're multiplying by a tiny number, you can't neglect that. That was the whole problem that we were facing due to our previous analysis. Okay, so, E of P now, far away is going to be kq, there is nothing you can do in the numerator, but in the denominator you can approximate this as r square, r square whole square is r to the power 4. And therefore electric field far away, you can cancel one r over here and you get 2 kq, oh I'm sorry, that's not a 2, that's a 4. Oh gosh. Ah, yes, I remember. Okay, it's a 2 a and 2 a and that's supposed to be a 4. Alright. So you end up now with a 4 kq a divided by r q. That's the field far away. And I'm going to write it a little bit more differently. A little bit small change, small change I'm going to do. And that's going to be... Uh, I'm going to keep a 2 outside. K, I'm going to put that Q and 2A inside divided by RQ. And you will see in a while why am I doing this. Let's now try and understand how does that far field look like compared to what we saw in the previous cases. The first thing to note is this is not in the form of KQ by R square. It is not a radial field. So that's one thing we understand. The characteristics is not radial anymore. Radial. Sorry. Radial. It's not radial anymore. But more importantly, more importantly, what does the field depend on? Does it depend on sigma q? No, sigma q is zero. It depends on charge on any one of them and it also depends on 2a. It depends on the internal distance between the two charges. And that is amazing because we did not see that before. What I'm trying to tell you is even if you have this system where the two charges are uh, say about 2 millimeters apart and if you're looking at the electric field a kilometer away, this distance of 2 millimeters actually influences the electric field a kilometer away. That's the thing when it comes to a dipole. Dipoles are special because of that. This is a special charge configuration. So now we can see it depends on that distance. It does depend. It is not independent anymore. Alright, now try to follow me carefully. Imagine I went far away, far away from this charge configuration and instead of having a Q and a minus Q, so let's, let's do it this way. Let's take an example over here. Imagine I have a charge of plus one microcoulomb and a charge of minus one microcoulomb and I separate by a distance of 2 millimeters. Okay? I ask you what's the electric field far away, go a kilometer away. You can calculate the electric field now. You can do that. My question now is what happens if I now came here, okay, I, I come close to this and I increase that distance from 2 millimeter to 4 millimeters. Alright? I 
I innocently change the distance by 2 millimeters. I mean, I say look, 2 millimeters to 4 millimeters, such a small distance. Will it affect a field kilometers away? Yes, it does. Not only does it affect it, look at us what has happened now. Since my distance between the charges has doubled, the electric field far away doubles. Just think about it from 2 to 4 millimeters. It doesn't have to be millimeter, it can be a nanometer. If I double the distance, the electric field far away doubles. That's amazing. I don't know about you, but I find that pretty amazing. But if I was smart, I could do something like this. I could take those charges and I separate it two mill uh, 4 millimeters away. But instead of plus 1 microcoulomb and minus 1 microcoulomb, I would now make it plus half microcoulomb and minus half microcoulomb. What would be the electric field far away now? Would it be same as this or would it be different? Well, 2a, that the distance between them has doubled, but the charge on either one of them has reduced and become half. When you multiply them, you get the same answer. And therefore, the electric field far away due to this charge configuration or this charge configuration is identical. That means, as far as, as, as long as we are far away, the points far away don't care, strictly speaking, on the charges alone or the distances alone. All they care about, strictly speaking, is the product. That's what they care about. That's what the electric field depends on. The product is what matters. And I can, I can vary this in very many, many ways. For example, I could make this, let's say, one millimeter. And I could make this plus two micro and minus two micro. Again, notice the product here is two millimeter micro coulomb or whatever. Here also it's two when you take the product of Q times two. Here also it's two. As long as the product remains the same, the electric field far away remains the same. In other words, if I told you, hey, look man, there's an electric field over here, and you calculate that electric field, suppose, could you tell what would be the charge on the dipole? No. Could you tell what is the distance of the dipole? No. But could you tell what is the product of the charge and the distance? Yes. Electric field depends only on the product. The product is the characteristic feature or an intrinsic property of our dipole. It's the product that determines what the strength of the electric field is everywhere when you go far away from that. And that's why this product has a significance. This product becomes the identity of a dipole. All these dipoles are identical. And hence, this product, the identity of a dipole, is given a name. It's called as the dipole moment. Okay, so this product over here is called as the dipole dipole moment and we usually represent it as P. It's a vector quantity and we'll deal, we'll, uh, we'll deal with the vector part of it a little bit later in the next episode. And therefore, the electric field far away now can be now written as 2K P divided by R. So although it is independent, although it is dependent on the charge and the and the distance, the true thing that the electric field depends on is the product. Is the product what matters? And that's the whole idea behind dipole moment. Alright? Also, notice one more thing, the field dies out as 1 over R cubed, unlike our radial 1 over R square. So the characteristic feature we can write over here is the field is not radial, depends on product, product of Q and 2A, which we call as the dipole moment. And one more thing, hopefully it's not getting too crowded, one more thing is the field is inversely proportional as 1 over R Q, which dies out much quicker compared to our familiar 1 over R square radial field. Alright, so we'll talk more about this in the next video.